One thing I believe everyone needs to put at the back of their minds is, in this world, life is about activity. If you choose to be anxious, and if you choose to operate under a thesis of nothing good can come out of me, that's what's going to work for you. That's the principle. This whole generation of African youth are very special. We're revolutionary, or we're supposed to be. We're trying to make a difference. We're trying to make a mark and inspire the youth. Please. Hold on. Um, rolling. Rolling. Sound. 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 And action. Silence, please. We're rolling. And action. My name is Dozier Kalu. I'm a creative writer and I run the agency Kick and Co Synergy Limited. We're ghostwriters and marketers. Uh, my name is Okonko Joshua. Um, popularly known as Stoner. I own a photography brand, STX Studios. I am a creative director and I'm based in Abuja. My name is Chimezi Anumiri. I'm the creative director at Angry Youth. When Kick and Co and Angry Youth reached out to me to handle this project. I decided to be on the project because I felt it was a way, you know, that we could reach people, talk to people, and also inspire them to start creating. That's literally the, the whole point of this documentary. We just want everybody that's a creative or that wants to be creative to start from somewhere. The general idea or the inspiration behind the brand, I just figured, oh, okay, I could use this as a medium to get my message across because I feel there's a story to be told here like in Nigeria, the African youth. Like When we get clients, we use their stories to sell their offers because I believe and it's our thesis in the company that every sales offer or every sales pitch has to be a story that people can resonate with. So I don't limit myself to servicing just Nigerians or Africans because story is universal and everyone with a story can sell their products with their story. My name is Keme and I am the CEO and founder of Gaia Lumi, G-A-E-A-L-U-M-I. And um, I also do a bunch of other stuff, like, you know, a multidisciplinary creative. My name is Felicia Kama, and I'm a brand photographer based in Abuja, Nigeria. My name is Uchechuku Agnetha Dalbury. I'm an Ada, born Igbo, married Ijo. I'm a lawyer, an artist, an administrator, and I love working with creatives. So I started my company um, three years ago as a brand photographer in Nigeria. One thing that prompted me was when I started my company, I used to, I had a business at first where I would sell bracelets and stuff like that. So I would take photos of that on my phone and post it on social media. I would have a few friends who really loved how it looked. And then one of my friends messaged me knowing if I could shoot her brand. I did. and. The very first time I had the idea to start Gaia Lumi was, um, okay, backstory. I wanted a piece and I couldn't find it anywhere in the market. There were a lot of crochet tops, like emo goth-esque type things. Um, and I wanted it, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So I was like, wow, this is something that is similar to something I learned when I was in primary five. So like, Bing bada boom, I made it work. My name is Daniel Obogu. I'm a rollerblader and visual journalist. My name is Joy Adedu in Fashagba, and you can call me Doing. I'm a 
makeup artist and model based in Abuja, Nigeria? I picked up the name Manny Teo when I was in SS3. I was in senior secondary school in Benue State and there were like 500 other people with the name Emanuela. So they started calling me Senior Tseyo, that's by my last name. Mani is actually the short form for Emmanuel. But then I changed the spelling, I then became Mani Tseyo. Or rather, I then coined the name Mani Tseyo. For makeup, it was in 2018 when I got back from school and my mom was like, I should go and learn makeup or something. I learned that for three months and I had to go back to school because then I didn't have much time to learn a lot. So I just went back to school and started freestyling from there. <laughs> Musically, I've been making music since I was eight years old. Had my first studio session at the back of my house. There's this studio at the back of the house where my uncle came to stay with us for a short bit. And after school, I would just go meet him. My cousin recorded a song. They came for Patakot and recorded a song. And I was like, yeah, I want to do this too. So we started recording. And that's where writing just took off for me. I never wanted to be a rollerblader. To like be frank, I mean, I didn't even know what rollerblading was until university. And for a sport that doesn't have that publicity or awareness in a country like Nigeria, it's a struggle. But I think the passion as well fuels my desire to keep going at it every day. Nigeria is amazing. The food, the people, the vibe. Everybody wants to be like us. The best part about being Nigerian, I'd say, is the culture. I'm not conditioned to always greet. I'm conditioned to always help people. And personally, it has opened a lot of doors for me. Just understanding that culture, when you respect people, it takes nothing away from you. And I learned that from, from my Nigerian parents. And the worst part of being Nigerian is sometimes it feels like the good guys always finish last. Like it stems from little things like when you're going in traffic and you see a convoy of high class elitists that beat the traffic light. And people who are normal citizens, when we do the same thing, it's like the, the full might of the law descends upon us. It's not like I can't commit crime, it's not who I am personally. Um, it's not what my brand is about either. So imagine me, um, the CEO of a brand that gives back, doing criminal things to make money. It doesn't track. There's this narrative that is being projected to the international community um, about Nigerians being fraudulent and all of that and it would only be beautiful if the international community could dive in and see how talented and creative we Nigerians are. I think that would definitely bump up the local creatives in Nigeria to you know just get more opportunities and I think that would be a beautiful collaboration to see more. I've had to work in different industries modeling, makeup and writing. One issue I've had, probably trying to work with someone, modeling especially, photographer is telling you, okay, come over and let me do this shoot. And you're like, is it a studio? It's at my house. You're just thinking to yourself, who can you drag with you to follow you? So in case you have to fight, why should I be scared of working with someone, you know? If not because of the bad eggs that I've just made it look like a, an avenue to just play with girls. There's a whole lot of potential we have here and nobody to step people in the right direction. So that's the, like the point of this whole documentary. We're trying to inspire people. We're trying to let them know that, oh, you don't have to go down some nasty routes or do some things that you might not even be proud of, maybe just to survive. I think personally, you should think as far as possible, whatever it is you can imagine, you know, is possible, can become your reality. An ideal Nigerian is someone who is stubborn, <laughs> uh, a renegade, a black sheep, someone who doesn't conform to the status quo. That's a real Nigerian. 
because I mean now we have a saying no grief for anybody I think that's like the perfect definition of what a Nigerian is because you know if you really want to achieve something you have to be relentless whatever you want you need to go at it voraciously and grab it with all the might that you have I think people should do what they want to do <laughs> Coast writers are there for a reason, songwriters are there for a reason. You can hire me, you see I'm an excellent songwriter, excellent ghostwriter, and I won't tell anybody. Enjoy writing for people just as much as I enjoy writing for myself. So, um, operating in Nigeria has been interesting because it has got me business. Especially DAS brands, they want to work with Africans. They love the, the enterprising spirit. Some of my clients choose me over any other person bidding for their project because they see that I'm young, the person on the other side of the course, I can't believe you're this age. And then I've also lost business because sometimes I get a client interested, we've done all the sales pitches, we've done all the sales calls, and then for one reason or the other, either I can't receive payment for them or sometimes because of tax laws, they cannot hire me. I remember I was in the client's office, like when I started my business, and she's like, um, will you be able to handle our equipment? Because they're really expensive. And I'm like, um, yes, I also have expensive equipment, so I will be able to handle them. I'm not a child, so I will say there's a lot of ageism that comes to play there, so. The worst part of being <laughs> Sagba, I cannot even lie, but I feel like that affects everybody. <laughs> but especially if you're an independent artist and you have to navigate being alive and investing in your career. And it takes discipline. Also the people around you too, because then they'll be like, how far do you get? So that's a lot. But it's not really the worst part. I just say it's just one of the cons, as opposed to the many, many, many pros. I have experienced Nigeria as the poverty capital of the world. It's crazy that this time last year, um, the dollar was like half of what it is at the moment. And like, it's not really registering to some people. You know how we like to joke and play about everything, but it's, it's, it's horrible. It's terrible. I, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. From every aspect of our reality as Nigerians, the people are struggling, basically. It's getting harder to feed, it's getting harder to live. We're trying to see how we can change the narrative, how we can let them know, make them aware of that there's a better Nigeria that's possible. And, you know, letting them know that there are also people, now I'm talking to young people, like there are also people that are like them, that are doing fantastic stuff in a lot of fields. What would you say is your ideal Nigeria, your dream Nigeria? Describe that to me. My dream Nigeria? First of all, I, I realize a lot of people are running away from Nigeria and I don't blame them because the country is hard. But I just feel like Nigeria is still a place where you can thrive. So I, I believe Nigeria is somewhere that skills actually, they actually push it more for students aside education because they just prepare people to go to school and do maybe mass communication and all of that but yeah I have big dreams and I think sometimes I actually want to slow it down because then when you're thinking about what's going on in the country your brain is just thinking you're, you're dreaming too big but then I actually see people doing a lot of things in Nigeria a lot of young people and they're not banking on the government and they're making things happen so I'm just thinking to myself you're on the right path keep going my ideal Nigeria is peaceful. I can take a road trip from Jigawa to Enugu, hitch free. The canals can be mistaken for streams because people don't dump their refuse in them. In my Nigeria, Nigeria, we recycle our trash. People respect one another. Nobody's just trying to make a quicker box. There's real love. There's selflessness. People care about the nations development as opposed to personal enrichment and oh I'm keeping it for my sons and my family. People actually care that Nigeria as a whole is getting better and improving. Anything you want to do in this life 
find a community that will support you and then stay on that mantra. I recently created a book club. I believe a lot of people actually want to read books, but it's boring when you are reading something and you don't understand it. And I realized that sharing people's perspectives about a book, you just realize that people actually think differently, right? You know, it's like going to a scene and you get there and someone's focused to the front and the person's looking the other way. So bringing all that together actually gives you a better understanding of what that book actually tells you. And for long term, we're looking at bigger projects that can't be disclosed now, but keep following us, you would see where we are headed. Um, luckily, I have been able to like create, well, I mean, we're all familiar with the Okwa Gubini. Be as it may, something happened two years ago, and I was uh, given the opportunity to make it for someone in a certain style then luckily for me was able i mean not luckily for me because i'm a very talented person so i was able to see what they wanted and make it like with my own eyes and then that opened doors to more co collaborations with um Odumodu, as everyone knows and we know how that's going currently the gray project i am excited about the gray project i think gray as a franchise, I like to as a franchise has a lot of potential and it's something that I put sweat, growth, energy into a village. I involved as many people as I could. It felt like that project for me. My biggest cheerleader is my twin sister, Selena Kama. Um, she cheers me on so much. I don't think I have a bigger cheerleader than that. So yeah, that's my biggest cheerleader. And my mom as well. My parents, they're my biggest cheerleaders and support system. My sister, I love her so much. My number one support system is my lovely little sister, who's also behind the scenes at the moment. She is going to go very far as well, and I can't wait to see like what she does. So I'd say to anybody who's demoralized that, first of all, stop believing that you're demoralized. It's just stop. When you start a project, when you start, you start something you like, there's always fear, there's always uh, inferiority complex, thinking somebody is better than you, you know, there's always somebody you're comparing yourself to. But I think that's what kind of makes you better as a creative. The fear is normal, but regardless of that, you need to put out work, you need to put in work, you need to do more, and you need to do better. To all the youths that are demoralized, tired, and are thinking of giving up, I would say to you, don't give up. You can't give up. You can't afford to give up. Grind anything, even if it's pepper. Start anywhere. Think really about your passion. Think about your people and think about what you want to offer them. And don't look back. To the youth, anxious about their future, be rest assured that you are good as long as you are confident in what you're doing and as long as you're passionate about what you're doing. I would say um, this generation we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and just taking things piece by piece, understanding that your journey is quite different from someone else. So you know don't compare yourself to the other person, you don't know their inside story, you don't know what people go through behind closed doors. So just pace yourself, don't rush yourself and understand that you're on your own journey. I know that whatever I'm doing I try my best to be me. And that's a continuous thing that you have to keep doing, otherwise you might get engrossed in what other people are doing and who they are. I think the goal is to look more inwards and be self-sufficient and uh, develop a scene where everyone is able to make something out of it here and we all build each other and grow as a collective. The creatives in general, they're everywhere and, you know, we need to collaborate more you know, share resources, share ideas, let's work together, you know. Everybody can get their daily bread because these days the bread is not even daily anymore. Everyone that's young needs to understand that our life is mostly in our hands and we need to be conscious of the influences 
that we let into our lives. And then when it comes to the time where we should take action, we shouldn't fill our plates up with so much stuff because even looking at a to-do list that is massive will cripple you to even take the first step. So I'd say take bite-sized steps, think of a narrative that makes sense from where you are to where you believe is possible, which is big. You have an imagination. Just think big and see things in your mind's eye and then when the narrative makes sense, just start executing because basically that's how you get things started. You imagine it in your mind's eye and let that be the blueprint for your action. And then you take the action and just see where it leads. Just get on a trajectory and then you never know where it leads. I don't know where mine is leading, but we keep living every day and we'll see where we end up.